Hello, hello guys. Today we are talking about how you can find that sweet spot when you're doing your strength training for hiking, but you're struggling for balance with the exercise. Now, when it comes to strength training for hiking, as I've talked about many times on this podcast, many of the exercises that are super, super specific for hiking are a little bit tricky to do. Now, some of my favorite exercises, which so many hikers will get amazing benefits of, include things like step downs, single leg deadlifts, pistol squat variations, even skater squat variations. You know, these are really, really specific for hiking. They don't really require any equipment, so many hikers don't enjoy the gym, so you don't have to go to the gym. And they can really be a great addition to any hiker's training week. But they all have something in common in the sense that they're all single leg exercises and very, very specific to hiking. And they also do require a reasonable amount of balance. Now, if you've ever gone out and tried to do a single leg deadlift for the first time, when you know it can be very, very tricky and you're, you know, shaking all over the place, your ankle shaking, your knees shaking, you're falling over and you basically spend a large part of the movement, unless you're, you know, luckily very balanced already, but most people spend a large part of the movement just purely just trying to stay on their feet and not wobble around. And while this isn't the biggest deal in the world and it will fix itself up eventually, there is one problem with this. If you're going through one of these strength exercises and your balance is just not good enough and you spend the whole time just trying to stop falling over, you're not really going to spend much time actually getting stronger on your legs. And you're going to get frustrated, you're going to get tired and mentally fatigued, and you're purely just going to be working on your balance with that that exercise as opposed to actually getting stronger. But as we talked about previously on the podcast, if you are trying to get stronger or if you are trying to do something specific in your training, you want to be making sure you're getting that outcome out of the exercise. So previously we talked about not mixing your cardio with your strength training in the sense that If you're trying to get yourself huffed and puffed while doing strength stuff, you're probably not really going to get super strong. You might do it for a little while, but it's not really an incredibly effective way. And the same thing for your strength exercises. If you're doing a strength exercise and you're purely just wobbling around and working on your balance, you're going to be developing your balance, which is good, but you're not going to be getting stronger. So my firm belief in this situation is if you are struggling for balance, is work on your balance with another exercise. And in the meantime, while you're doing these strength exercises, just give yourself a little bit of support so you can actually work on the muscles, give them the stimulus they need, challenge them when it comes to its strength. So you can continue to get stronger to help you on the trail. And then as you learn the exercise, as the body gets a little bit more used to it, and as you develop your balance in other ways, you can slowly, slowly, slowly um, take away the support structure and get yourself um, doing the full exercise without any added supports. Now, a really easy way of going about this, if it's not really purely making sense over the audio format, is let's take the single leg deadlift example again. So you run one leg, one foot goes in the air, and you're basically tipping over horizontal and then coming up. What you can do in that situation is if you are struggling for balance is you can simply pull out your trekking poles and use them as a support structure. So you'll put two of them on the floor, use them, um, hold them in your hands, tip over, come up, and in that way you can really, really focus on the hamstrings and the glutes working and you won't be falling over yourself. Now this is a really, really simple thing that most hikers will be able to do um, because most of us should have trekking poles. If you don't have poles, you could use a chair, you could use a wall, you could use a bench, you could use a broomstick, or whatever it may be. But it's a really, really simple way of going about it. And then the key when it comes into this type of thing is if you are using a certain sort of support structure, you wanna make sure it doesn't turn into a crutch which you rely on all the time. But you wanna have a plan where you're taking yourself from point A where you need support to get through this exercise to point B where you don't need the support and you get through this exercise without any support at all and there might be a few points in between as well. So in a situation when you're using the trekking poles, a really great progression flow that I like is you'll start with two trekking poles, hold them in your hands, use them for as much balance as necessary. You'll do that for two, three, four weeks or however long it takes to start feeling a little bit more confident um, confident, and then you'll get rid of one pole and you just do one, um, and you just hold one pole. So that way, if you're only using half the support, you're challenging your balance a little bit more, challenging your stability a little bit more, but you still have that support to actually get through the exercise. Then you might do that for two, three, four weeks, depending on how long it takes you. And then you might go from holding your trekking pole just to just putting your hands on the tops and just using your fingertips and using that as balance as you go through. 
And again, you might do it for two, three, four weeks, and then you go to the stage where you do no poles. So, you know, you're just doing the traditional exercise and then do that for two, three, four weeks, and then you'd add a little bit of weight or you do a more complex uh, variation of the exercise or whatever it may be. But that's a really, really simple progression plan that anyone can do to take themselves from an exercise which they really, really struggle for balance to something which they're absolutely mastering. Now, I wanted to talk about this today because this is a topic that has come up a few times in the Summit Strength uh, team um, quite a few times over the previous weeks. We've had a lot of people come on board the program, which has been fantastic. But yeah, many people do struggle with this when they're first getting into training. And, you know, some people were concerned that they've been doing, again, single leg deadlifts for a few weeks now and it just wasn't getting any easier. And I told them myself, look, when I first learned them, I didn't go through this process. Um, I just stuck with it, wobbled around. I had terrible balance. It took me a good eight months to learn and actually be able to focus on really, really feeling, you know, the muscles working. And obviously that's a long process and that's very inefficient. And I obviously didn't go about it very well. But if I went backwards and actually started using these support structures and helped myself and made it a little bit easier, that process would have been much, much quicker. So if you do struggle in this situation, if it's with any of your strength training and you do feel like you're wobbling all over the shop, I highly recommend pull out the trekking poles, get a broomstick, get a chair, whatever you need to do, and bit by bit by bit, just make sure you're working hard and slowly, slowly improving that stability. It's such a smarter way to go about it than just struggling through and falling over yourself for so long. So if you're in this situation, I highly recommend you give it a go. Now, if there were any particular exercises you struggled with and you were not sure how to best use this, um, this strategy to help support your balance, I've got a challenge for you. Now, come find the Training for Hiking and Trekking Facebook group, in which is my private Facebook group, which I put up a load of content around training for hiking and nutrition and mental strength. If you struggle with a particular exercise, come onto the group, post up which exercise you struggle with and which is uh, something giving you a little bit of trouble. And then I can do a video in return for you to show you exactly how you can go about that and progress it. More than welcome for anyone to hop on, any exercise pointers, come on board, post up in the group. And it's a great place to really, really hone in this training knowledge we're talking about on the podcast and just take it that next step into the visual knowledge and a little bit more expanded on certain topics. So if you're not a part of that group yet, please do find it. It's the Training for Hiking and Trekking Facebook group. I'll leave a link in the show notes below. And anytime you do need a hand with something like that, I'm always there to help. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode today, guys. I hope you got a little bit of insight and a little bit of value out of it. Um, Any questions, please do let me know. But if not, we'll talk to you very, very soon.